Hello, um, so I'm here to uh, talk about a bunch of things. Comcast and Fox and Disney, because more stuff has come out about that, and also I'm going to talk about Star Wars stuff, you know. I mean, I, that does kind of tie into it, because, you know, Disney has Lucasfilm, and Fox has the only Star Wars film in distribution, not owned by Disney. But uh, pertaining to all this stuff regarding, I'm just going to be talking about it. All right, I'm going to first talk about, there's so much stuff that's gone on with this past week, and, uh, even two weeks. I really should have said a bunch of this stuff last time, but or even last week, but I decided I'm going to take a break from Star Wars. Well, every time I do, something happens, and I don't want this to be the Star Wars show. Um. Again, nothing wrong with Star Wars, but it's like, come on, I, I don't want to always talk about Star Wars. I want to talk about other things. You know, I've got a bunch of movies I can talk about, rewatch, and then talking. Yeah, and I was going to do so, but and then this happened. So, anyway, I'm going to talk about the Fox thing again. I'll leave that in the description. Because other things have been, there's been so much stuff talking about with Star Wars, but I'll get to that later. But with, uh, yeah, with, uh, the Fox, uh, apparently it's the whole U.S. government, uh, Justice Department, whatever was in charge of holding out on Fox and Disney's merger, apparently that, I guess, gave, they gave the go-ahead that they can do it. And like in a shareholders meeting, uh, it was supposed to take place for Fox uh, on uh, <clears throat> uh, June or July something. No. July twenty seventh is when this new uh, this shareholders meeting to approve of Disney's proposed offer of 7.13 billion dollars um, apparently uh, Disney won uh, okay this Wednesday yeah Disney reached a important milestone winning the approval of the US Justice Department for the proposed acquisition to win the government's blessing Disney agreed to yeah, they're just gonna do. They want to buy Fox. End of the line. Um, now, uh, apparently, yeah, July tenth was supposed to be the uh, shareholders meeting, but they propose postponed it to J July twenty seventh because uh, Comcast made their offer. And they made another offer, but this is the most recent article, I believe. Yeah. It's eight hours ago, so I'm going to go with that in the, in the description from the LA Times. It's the most recent as of now, a few hours ago, whatever. Ba basically, you know, uh, I guess... Apparently, there's one article that says, oh, they don't want to sell to Comcast. Okay. Shouldn't want to sell to Disney. I mean, they're going to be... People want... I think a big thing is people want X-Men and the Avengers. That's it. I think that's what a huge portion of people wanting. The Star Wars thing, that's kind of like... I guess people acknowledge that, but they don't really think about it much. Or maybe people just don't think about it at all. But comic book fans are what really are propose propo want this to happen. Essentially, is what I'm trying to say. Look at the big picture. Um, do you think films like the Deadpool films will be able to keep going as they have been? R-rated? Maybe, but I don't know. I say I don't know because uh, again I go back to Star Wars but 
George Lucas was promised a lot of things when he gave he was he signed on the dotted line to give his company away. He was promised specific things. His story outline would be a template for the new trilogy of films and the <clears throat> And he would be the creative consultant. Neither came to fruition. Nothing happened. He was booted out. Disney didn't want him. Kathleen Kennedy, Lucasfilm didn't want him. Once he was no longer the head of Lucasfilm, take a hike, as this is what they said. And, um, yeah. Star Wars is the way it is now, whether you like the new direction or not. I'm not too fond of it, but hey, whatever. I mean, to each their own. Um, now, a big problem I and others have had with this whole thing. I mean, even if we talk about the whole oh, Marvel and stuff. Well, look at it this way. How good do you think it's going to last? It might be fine for a while, but it could become garbage. Deadpool, they might say, oh, we're going to read, it's going to be rated R, we'll never make it PG-13, or whatever, we're never going to try and make them do whatever they don't want, they'll do with their own thing. If, uh-huh, well, what happens when they get a hold of it, and then they decide, no, no, we don't want that, we, we, we want a different direction, make it more family-friendly. You can't have family-friendly Deadpool, he's not Deadpool. X-Men Origins Wolverine have I guess kind of that, but I mean, I personally enjoyed that film. I know a lot of people don't like that movie, but I enjoyed it. Deadpool was really the biggest problem. I didn't think everyone else basically had with that, but I mean, there's some others. Some characters are introduced just for setups, like set up for their own films or future mo movies or. They're just there to be there and to kill, be killed off. Have little to hardly any, like, have little importance to do with the plot. But, and that all aside, I mean, we've already had that version of Deadpool. And I know Disney says, well, we're going to do it, but people will keep it, saying Disney will stick to their word. Well, they didn't stick to their word with George Lucas, who was one of the most influential filmmakers of all time. Whether you enjoy the Star Wars prequels or not, He's a revolu he revolutionized the way the film industry has <clears throat> become now. There's so much done. Visual effects. Special effects. Um, the way business is done in the film industry. The way certain techniques and sound design and all this stuff is done in the film industry. There's so much things, there's so much stuff he did. And he's a very important person in the in the film industry as a whole whether you enjoy some of the movies or all the movies or none of the movies he ever made or not that's entirely ever the that's not even a, remotely the point the point is he's huge he is huge in the film industry he's never been in, he's not a hollywood director he never was and never wanted to be but he's an independent filmmaker he's a he's an he's a huge name in the film industry as a whole and he it was promised a lot of things, and they basically, in a way, just screwed him. They screwed him. They said, "We'll give you our word." And nothing happened. Nothing happened. Like in that, they kept his their word with George Lucas. They did not. Uh, they did not go with his story. Like they, like he was believed. He believed them when they, like, agreed. Uh, when they going to buy his company from him, he believed them that he would be the creative consultant, and these didn't come to fruition. So why would people believe Disney on their word when they say, oh, we'll let Deadpool be Deadpool, and then might have X-Men join the Avengers? And the Avengers has a lot of characters going on as it is already, obviously. And look, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but, I mean, it's just, 
what may sound good and maybe start out good, I will say it could begin to be good if this does happen, but then once they gain people's trust, they might rip it out from underneath all of us because, well, they're Disney. They want to do things their way. They don't care about the fans. They don't care about whether they're a company run by mostly people who somehow got into the position they are. Many of them have not made films. I personally think film companies should be run by filmmakers, people who know how to make movies. They should be the people who make the decisions on this. Whether we agree with them or not, I would say at least, you know, the people, when you look at them, they know what they're doing. I know you're like, well, Kathleen Kennedy, she's, you know, a producer and stuff. Yeah, she produced a bunch of stuff for Spielberg and whatnot, but when you see some of the stuff she's done in these new Star Wars films, I think it's safe to say all the good ideas she had were very little to do with the films of yeah, Spielberg that she produced. She didn't really have a whole lot, because even Spielberg even said, as his secretary, she wasn't very good at her job, but they kept her around because, oh, she listened to us, and things like that. A secretary is supposed to do certain things, and if she's not good at being a secretary, you fire her, Stephen. I don't care if how nice she is. I don't care if she listens to you and other people. I don't care about that. If I was good, if I had a secretary, but she's not good at her, or he or she or whoever, basically if they're not good at their job, they're going to get fired. They're going to be let go because they're not doing what they're, they're supposed to, you know, oh, I'm out, I'm doing something, you take, take messages, uh, set up appointments, do... Do certain things like that. You're supposed to do things like that, and if they don't do that, they're gone. I don't care if they're nice or what, whatever. I mean, if they're not good, they're not good. The end. Uh, the only contribution I've ever really noted is this film. Um, and I say this, Empires of the Sun, because this was uh, Christian Bale's first major film, right? I think everybody pretty much knows that. People who are movie buffs and self-proclaimed film experts. Well, she essentially uh, got the got Steven Spielberg. She really pushed for him to get cast Christian Bale. And, you know, he's done a bunch of movies. I have a lot of his movies here. Some of them. Or all of them, whatever. Uh, yeah, if all, whatever. Uh, yeah, these are the three pack I've got American Psycho, 310 to Yuma, Velvet Goldmine. You know, he did these. Did Machinist. Uh, American Psycho, which was on DVD there. Public Enemies, The Fighter, which won him an Academy Award. He won an Oscar for this. Uh, Out of the Furnace, American Hustle, Big Short, and Hostiles. All of which are great and amazing, and also up here, they have different versions of these, honestly. But the Dark Knight trilogy. He, he's Batman. Probably his biggest role he, to date, honestly. Um, just gonna put that there for now. But you see what I did? I I pointed out all that stuff out and took that out because. He's one of the best actors, right? He's considered at least one of the best actors of his generation. Perhaps one of the greatest actors of all time, one can argue. People like Christian Bale. People will pay money to see a film he's in. 
And Kathleen Kennedy uh, pushed Spielberg in the direction of casting him out of 4,000 uh, kids, I believe. I believe so. Um, I think it was 4,000. Maybe it was more, but I just know it was four something. Uh, but yeah, she essentially nudged for him to get cast, and he did. And we have films like that, performances, as we I, I pointed out. He's done a lot of great work. He's amazing at what he does. And in that retrospect, thank you, Kathleen Kennedy, but uh, many people don't think her ideas for the new Star Wars films are all that great. Like the direction she has in the management of Lucasfilm. And to have Disney... You know, and to have her running a film company, man, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I don't know. I guess George's friendship with her, being friends with Steven Spielberg, uh, that might have been like the only reason. I don't know. I don't know all what happened in, with that decision, but that seems to be a big factor, I would believe. But yeah. So yeah, I think you kind of like get what I'm saying. She's not the... And I've talked about The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, how the direction of those films are bad. I believe. I'm not fond of them. If you are, great. Don't take what I say as meaning that you can't like them anymore. You can like what you like. I like what I like. I, do, I dislike what I dislike. You can dislike what you dislike. You can dislike everything I say. It's all fine. Me, I'm just like... I want to see good Star Wars films. I like being entertained by Star Wars. I like merchandise. Yeah. Vote Vader. Uh, it's funny, I guess. Uh, but... Yeah. Someone like her, who really hasn't done a whole lot that one can point to, well, except, oh, making it more diverse in, in Lucasfilm. Well, good for her, I guess, in that way, but outside of that, how's that helping improve the films? I don't get it. I just don't. But maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm not. But, yeah, uh, Disney should be run by f people who make films. Fox should be, too. Cam cost... Or, Comcast, Comcast, bleh, I can't talk, I don't know, Fox should just remain as 20th Century Fox, Disney should have no part of it, I've already said that before, I'll say it again, same with Comcast, go away, Disney, quit being a monopoly, competition is a good thing, competition means, hmm, this company did this, hmm, the, the, the answer and the way of thinking should not be, hmm, how can we get a hold of Fox? Hmm. No, it should be, hmm, what's Fox doing and what can we do? You know, what can we do to make our films make just as much money, if not more so, than what Fox did? Fox put out this film. Hmm. They put out Deadpool. They put out Logan. They put out Deadpool 2. Uh... The Predator's coming out this year. I'm, I mean, I saw the trailer, and I'm like, eh, it's okay, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I might watch it. Maybe not. But it looks interesting, to say the least. Uh, maybe they'll do something cool with it. Uh, I don't know. But, yeah, that's another franchise. They're going to own Predator. They're, they'll own uh, Alien if all this goes through. Comcast... I mm -hmm. guess they just want to take stuff away from Disney and competition, which, in that regard, I'm like, well, uh, good for Comcast. And if I had to root, if, root for one side, I guess I'd be on the Comcast side, but I'm not really for Comcast either. 20th Century Fox should just stay... 20th Century Fox should not be bought by Disney or Comcast. Disney really is being a monopoly, or trying to be... Uh, in a case you forget, the game Monopoly, 
You know how people dislike the person who owns the most property? And what you then have to... Every time you hit on a space or a piece of land or whatever that they own... Well, then you, you got to pay every time. And if you can't pay, well, there's a penalty. And I mean, not necessarily there'll be a penalty if Disney... Well, for Disney, exactly. Unless you people quit seeing films by Fox. That would be the only message, honestly, to be sent to them. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's just sad. I mean, I... They're trying to be in Monopoly. I mean, need to, I'd say they just need to quit it and stop, but... I'm just one guy. It's my opinion. It's my thought on view on things. Uh, so, this other stuff with Star Wars. Apparently, first with the spinoffs. Apparently, uh, it was said that spinoffs were no more. They're done. Say goodbye. No more. No Obi Wan film. No Boba Fett film. No whatever kind of film people wanted to see regarding a certain character or an event that's been in some of the books. Well, then they later said, all but the Obi-Wan film was on hold, but we're still not sure what we're doing with Obi-Wan yet. So basically, Obi-Wan's a go. Kenobi is a go. And that's it. Yoel McGregor has no clue what's going on. He's never been even approached by Disney. He hasn't been asked by them to do anything. <clears throat> I don't know uh, what they're doing, honestly. Um, anything, I guess, could be possible with Kenobi. Uh, Disney, Lucas, needs to just say something. Say something, just, just do it. And the other thing is, apparently, Grace Randolph, who has a channel, I'm sure you probably know who she is, behind the trailer, where she talks about movies and the industry and all that. Well, apparently she said that uh, Lucas, the head of Disney, Bob Iger, knows people aren't happy with Star Wars and that Star Wars is not in a good place. And he got the heads of all the other companies, Pixar and, um, <clears throat> you know, Marvel, all together. And they're talking about this. Now, all those guys couldn't really say much because he's addressing Kathleen Kennedy. But uh, some thought, oh, I don't know, I think it's bull. I think she's just saying things because she has a source who told her. They don't know how reliable her source is. Well, just remember, Grace used to work for uh, Marvel, and she probably still has connections, and uh, <clears throat> maybe one of those people, they heard what they heard, and they're like, hmm, this should kind of get out there, and they said it to her, basically, it's, it seems as if Kathleen Kennedy could be on her way out. Nothing exactly for sure, but... She could possibly be on her way out. That's what Grace said. That's what she was saying in the video, basically. This meeting with all the heads of the studios Disney owns, Bob Iger got them together, talked, said to addressing Star Wars. And because, you know, if something happens with Star Wars, it affects that, will affect Disney because they own Lucasfilm, and if things start declining, what if people stop seeing as many Marvel films or Pixar films? What if people, in a way, will start responding to other properties and things that Disney owns? Like, we're not going to support Disney at all. We're not going to support anything. Perhaps that's a way or a reason why they, they could be trying to get Fox, but again, stop with that. Now, I think if, if this is all true, and in a way, I kind of like, I don't know exactly how to feel, but 
I mean, because she worked at Marvel, because she, I'm sure, likely still has sources at Marvel. Yes, is it? Should you be kind of suspicious? Sure, but I'm not gonna say no. I don't believe her. I'm not gonna say that because maybe they just whoever was there in the meeting said some stuff and that got passed down to Marvel. You know, like they, I'm sure, like the heads of the other companies told some other heads, like. You know, this here's what happened today. I had this meeting with Bob Iger and all these guys. Laid out how Star Wars isn't doing well. Could possibly affect uh, Marvel. Could affect Pixar. And it's just... I don't know. I mean, is it a good sign? Is it a bad sign? I don't know. But then again, how valid is it? I know I'm kind of talking a bit vague about the whole thing, but I'm trying to summarize everything. I'm trying to summarize it all so I don't talk forever. I'm sure none of you want to watch me for an hour or so. And I understand. I wouldn't want to either. But basically, I'm going to try to get this at least 30 minutes at most. But This whole thing with Kathleen Kennedy, I mean, she should have been dropped quite some time ago. She's helped in antagonizing fans where like if you don't like Star Wars, the new Star Wars you're a racist, you're a sexist you're a misogynistic homophobic, Islamophobic this and that, any kind of buzzword you can think of you're getting called names if you don't like the new movies and it's like I was called names with the prequels enjoying those and I do my best not to try and get mad at fans. I have said in the past I might have actually um, said some stuff in comments of videos that could be seen as being angry towards fans. Uh, the fans who enjoy the movies. I try not to. But I could have. I don't really recall every single comment I've ever made on every video I ever commented about not enjoying the new Star Wars films. The episodes more specifically, I do enjoy the anthology films. But that's just me. Um, it's just so... When she started doing that, and saying, like, uh, calling people names, the force is female. It's like, what about the male audience? You don't care about the male audience? Well, I don't owe men anything. Well, that's true, you don't owe us anything. You know. However, we're the most predominant fan base of the franchises that Lucasfilm owns, which you are in charge of. More Star Wars fans are male than female. More Indiana Jones fans are male, not female. That doesn't mean females cannot enjoy Star Wars or Indiana Jones, but between a man and a woman... Men are more likely to enjoy Star Wars and Indiana Jones than women. That's not me being sexist or anything. That's a fact. It's always been a fact since these franchises have uh, came out. For Star Wars, it's been a fact for 41 years. Men mostly enjoy Star Wars and are more likely to enjoy it, Star Wars than women. Same with Indiana Jones, which will be 40 in some years. A few years off, uh, 2021. Now, I'm just trying to say all of this because I, I just want people to know and understand that uh, I don't try to hate on the fans. If you enjoy the new f films from Star Wars, fine, great. More power to you. I'm not so much a fan. Others aren't either. And we're not hating because, oh, the new lead's a female. No, I don't care. Uh, Carrie Fisher played Princess Leia and she was a lead too in the original trilogy. Natalie Portman was a huge part 
in the prequels as well. I didn't hate her. I didn't hate their characters. I didn't hate Ahsoka. Well, with Ahsoka Tano in the Clone Wars, she wasn't very likable at first, but she, she the audience grew to like her. You know, she had an arc. She earned the respect and likability fans got. That's a great way of a female character. Mara Jade Skywalker. Luke Skywalker's wife from the old EU. The mother of his son, Ben Skywalker. She's a great character. The solos. Han and Leia had Jason and Jenna. I want to say. And, uh, Jenna Solo, yeah. Jenna Solo, yeah. But, I mean, there's other female characters in the expanded universe, and in, or the old one and in the current one. Of Star Wars that people like and love. Ray just is not an interesting character overall. She's kind of she's a she's boring. She has all these powers, force abilities, with no even hints. With Luke, we got it because his father was a Jedi. Obi Wan's telling him he has the Force. Force is what gives a Jedi his power and all that good stuff. Uh, <clears throat> He's taught all this. We know he has the Force because he was basically born with it. Same with Leia. The Force works with her and Luke in different ways. Anakin was essentially conceived from the Force. Uh, basically, uh, actually not even basically, he was conceived by the Force. It, it's, it's, it, you know, with these characters, we understand why they can have the Force. With Rey, there is no hint. To her, the Force was a myth at most. It didn't happen. It wasn't real. Jedi's didn't really exist. Luke Skywalker's a myth. All that. She never believed it, basically, pretty much. Just nice stories to tell. Uh, people to, I guess, to, when things are down, tell them the story like Luke Skywalker, the, the fable, the legend, to kind of give kids sort of a up, up, you know, some uplifting moments when things aren't looking good. That kind of thing. She never really believed, she didn't believe the Force. And we had no hint prior that she did. Either. She just started to read Kylo Ren's mind. She's good at everything, even though we don't know how she can fly. I mean, she rides a speeder, but that's it. She rides a speeder. For all we know, that's all she ever drove, flew, whatever. She knows all this stuff. It's like, well, how? With Luke, well, he was a pilot. He flew around, and later in the movie, even meant, there's even more mentions of it. He's able to, like, the, you know, the controls of a X-Wing or that of a T-16, which he flew on Tatooine. It's just, it's, it's, there's stuff that you can see with Luke and Anakin. I didn't go into Anakin, but, you know, he was a good pilot, too. He didn't know all what to do with the controls for, like, the ship he flew in Episode 1. You know, he had to take it off all a pilot, and he was kind of going everywhere. It was spinning, you know. Uh, but, you know, so he's not perfect. With Ray, she doesn't seem to have really flaw any flaws, or at least no major flaws that one could think of. It's just it's she's like a perfect character. And Holdo and Rose Tico are also boring. Those Holdo kind of shows the incompetence of a woman in charge of a like a, in a general position. Women should be offended by that character. Like she's talking down on Poe, but because of her, a mutiny starts because she won't give information to everybody. If she gave everybody the information, 
no mutiny would have ever happened. Everybody would be like, oh, okay, I see what you're doing, fine, we can be on board with that. But no, keeping it in a secret. Yeah, it was dumb. Rose Tico, her main contribution is uh, freeing animals and sticking it to the rich. Well, fine and dandy, I guess, if that's your thing, but you left kids there, they're going to get beaten now. You don't care about the kids, huh? Okay, well... That's nice. You're gonna get beaten now because you have to get because they basically they assisted in <clears throat> helping them release the animals. It it uh, I could go on, but I think you understand what I mean. The character development of the female characters in these new films, the new episode films, aren't that good. Jin Urso, there's Something of interest there, I guess you could say. Kira is something there, I guess. Uh, uh, I'm not going to go into all the details there, because we only have one film about each of us with those characters. So I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail there, plus I've gone on way longer than I wanted to, but I think you get my point. Female characters in Star Wars that are good. Padme, Leia, Ahsoka, Mara Jade. Jaina Solo. I mean, the list goes on and on of good female characters. Ray, Holdo, Rose are bland, boring, and uninteresting characters. It's it's, and it's 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 sad to see what Star Wars has become with the characters. And Kathleen Kennedy says you're a sexist if you don't like the new direction. It's like, what? No, I liked Leia, I liked Padme, I liked those characters, Ahsoka. I mean, there's nothing wrong with those characters. They have arcs. Or they have a purpose. The purpose of these new movies is like, raise the new Jedi because. Oh, okay, she has the Force. Why? Ugh. And J.J. Abrams apparently will not at all... Uh, ignore The Last Jedi, so he's just continuing. Whether he'll try to import some of his ideas into the new film is unknown. We don't really know. Yeah, I just don't... I don't know. It's it's so aggravating that this is going on in the Star Wars community. Again, you can like the new films if you, all you want. Enjoy the new Star Wars films if those are your thing. They're not my thing. They're not the the f favorite films for a good portion of people, and that's they're not sexist. They just don't think it's a good storytelling or character development or growth. Well, development, growth, the same thing. Whatever you know what I'm saying. I'm rambling now. I want to end it now. I want to end it by saying Kathleen Kennedy needs to get everything and tip-top shape best she can and get out and not have this toxic work environment because there's rumors of that going on too uh, I don't want to keep going on because then it'd be we I'd be here forever uh, and apparently nobody wants to take over Lucasfilm because of how divisive the fan base is and the toxicity of the company like, there's so much split and division with within the Lucasfilm company, within the brand of Star Wars, and as the, the Star Wars families. I'm sorry, I'm hiccuping and burping. Uh, but there's so much... There's so much going on. It, it's this cobbled-up mess... It needs to be sorted out. Clean house. I that would cost a lot of money, but maybe that'd be the best solution. Just clean house. Keep those who are very competent, know what they're doing. Get rid of the people who are there for either diversity's sake or whatever. Because if someone's there for diversity, are they actually qualified? Are they actually good at their job? Are they good at writing? Are they good at this? Are they good at that? What are they good at? 
if they're not good at what they're supposed to be in, let them go. They can find work somewhere else. If they're, it, it's 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 just so frustrating. And if people want to, and if they want Fox to be go to Disney just for the fact of Avengers and Marvel and 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 X Men and Avengers, you know, being in a film, that's not a good enough reason. Think of a different. That's not going to compel me to think that's a good idea. Sorry. The spinoff and Star Wars. Sort it all out. Quit announcing all this stuff ahead of time and pushing them out every single year. It's not good for the business. Disney. Being in a monopoly is not a good thing. Competition is a good thing. I mean... All these films are from different companies. Fox, <clears throat> Warner Brothers, Columbia, DreamWorks, Universal, uh, Dimension Films, Miramax, Paramount. Uh, yeah. Weinstein Company. Ugh, Weinstein. But anyway, you get what I'm saying. There's all these companies and more. Uh, MGM. Uh, there's, there's... There are so many companies, film companies. Competition is good because you can see what the competition is doing and try to do better. Maybe take something they did, but... Do it differently and maybe up the ante in some way. I don't know. But in the film industry, it's a good thing to have competition. So there you go. It began with the whole merger thing and it's ending there too. If you made it this far, I'm amazed and I thank you for hanging in there. But uh, yeah, that was a whole mouthful. I wanted to get it all out because I want to talk about other things. So I hope you all you understand, and uh, yeah, I shall see you all next time.